recently tested these two things against each other. They are Ryzen integrated heat spreaders. They're both copper, as stated previously. This one's just nickel-plated copper. Not really a big difference between them. It was about two degrees at the end of the day with testing, which is barely outside of test error and variance. So the question we had, and a lot of you had as well, was where is the two degree difference? Is it really just because it's bare copper rather than nickel plated or did rocket cool do something different with this, like increase the surface area or something? And probably a lot of the answer comes down to just lapping the surface, which is kind of an old thing to do. It's not really worth doing in general, but we're gonna try it out because we haven't done it for a Ryzen CPU yet. So this is a Ryzen APU, it's an R3 2200G. We've already done thermal tests on it. Now we're gonna basically sand down the surface. And the point of that is not to just expose bare copper. The point is more to flatten it, to get as many of the imperfections out of it as we can, so that when we have thermal compound between this and the cooler, there are fewer microscopic imperfections to fill. So that's what we're doing today. Before that, this video is brought to you by the EVGA X299 Dark Motherboard, the one that we recently used to take a top five world record for fire strike overclocking results. The EVGA X299 Dark Board is one of the best we've used presently in this current generation, and it has a coupon code of GAMERSNEXUS for a savings of $75 off for US customers. It expires on May 31st. If you've been interested in the X299 Dark with its actual VRM heatsink and actual VRM cooling capabilities, now is a good time to grab it. Use code GAMERSNEXUS at checkout. Click the link in the description below. The approach to this is pretty simple. Basically, I'm gonna tape some sandpaper to the table and then sand down the surface. And we're just gonna keep going until it's really shiny copper. It'll take a while probably. Uh, so we'll end up time-lapsing it most likely. But the, the plan is to use 600 grit to start with. If that's too much, we'll find out pretty quickly. Uh, 800 would be my alternative. And then we're gonna go up to 1200, 1500, 2000, maybe 3000, probably maybe do a wet sand in there too. Once some of the paper is worn down enough that it's functionally a uh, higher value grit anyway. So let's start with 600. The trick that I'm gonna use here is rather than take this and try to rub it on a, a small surface area, we're just gonna tape it to the table. And we've got the GN mod mat under it. So that's definitely not going anywhere. The table's gonna wobble as it does, but. So uh, this is your last look at the face of it before we get started. Ryzen R3 2200G. Uh, the imperfections here that we're getting rid of are not something that any of us would really be able to see without a microscope or magnifying glass but that's what we're trying to get rid of. We're probably not gonna bother with the backside, just the front, I think. So let's see how long this will take. Oh man, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Dang. The lettering's gone. I almost wanna test it right there. <laughs> just like, how much, basically the test would be, how much does AMD's laser etching impact the performance? The answer is not at all. But that looks pretty cool. Starting to see some copper at the edges there. See that? So originally, I have to keep an eye on this. That hole, which we'll see if it goes away, that's the original uh, bottom corner. So the word Ryzen would be face up in this current orientation, which for note taking purposes, it's going to be the, this is more for my own information, but if you need it to, in case you sand away the hole, the hole is to the right of the letters AMD on the inside when the letters AMD are right side up, when they're legible. So it's to the right of that D. Let's keep going with 600 before we move on. This is gonna be the roughest grit we use for now. Definitely getting some copper showing through. Going faster than I thought. Still 600, just got a new sheet. Definitely the edges are sanding away first. So if you've ever looked at a Ryzen IHS from AMD, not the Rocket Cool ones, 
they kind of look like a cylinder or a circle pushed down on the middle of them. The outer corners are always kind of chamfered. And what we're doing right now apparently is sanding those off. That's why you're seeing copper there first because they're higher than the middle of the IHS, which is just kind of an AMD manufacturing thing. So that's what you're seeing right now is we're seeing everything get sanded down to an equal level. Still pretty scratchy on the surface, but uh, there is some copper showing through in the middle. And as we keep going, we'll move to finer grit. Ow. <laughs> Just sanded off some of my skin. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of copper in the middle. So I think what we're going for is just visible copper everywhere. All right, that, that paper is so used now, it's basically become like a grit 800 or 1,000. So let's try one more of these, see how far we can get. That's cool, okay. Really getting there now. <laughs> it's weird how the middle's uh, middle's exposing earliest. So that was the highest, along with the edges, which I guess makes sense. It is where the dye contact is, and it's being exposed basically where the inner plate is at the same place. One more spot I want to get to be copper, and then we'll change the grit. Ow. There's blood in that one. <laughs> one more. One more sheet. What was that motherboard.vice.com quote? I bled for this fucking thing. Computer building so hard the hardest thing ever and it hurts if anyone hasn't seen our response to motherboard youtube likes to recycle it sometimes that's looking pretty good so there, there's your copper ihs there's the rocket cool one which is actually no it's roughly the same size if they're if they're different in size it's it's very 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 small amounts i think i maybe should have started with like a 400 or a 300 or something just so I could have sanded my skin off down to the bone instead. But also this would have been faster. One wet sand pass before we move up to the next grit. Have I mentioned before that the mod mat is pretty water resistant? Oh no, I accidentally got water on my mod mat. What do I do? Check that out, that's actually pretty cool though. <laughs> Looking good. Very smooth and polished. See all that copper dust and the water around it. It's definitely getting rid of more and more copper, starting to smooth it out. I think we've pretty much exposed the copper under the nickel plating at this point. Nickel plating is gone. So at this point, it's probably time to move to a grit 1200, I think, because this is getting very smooth now, basically sanding it to a polish in between each pass. We've even got some copper, copper dust on the mat. Okay, so 1200 next. And uh, if you do want one of the mats, which is evidently, as we're, we're learning with you, pretty water resistant, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and pick them up. They're currently on back order. If you place your order at the time this video goes live or shortly thereafter, you will definitely get one in the next production run. Uh, after that, kind of depends. We sell out pretty quickly, so you'll want to place one sooner rather than later. 
to make sure you get one for the next run, which will go out within the next couple of weeks. So there's some uh, like brown drops of liquid around the side. That's not drying blood from me. That's actually, well, it's probably not. It's just copper dust. <laughs> so 1,200 grit. So again, our goal here isn't to take off all of it, like sand it all the way down. Our goal is to smooth it a lot. So we're going 1,200 to, I think, 1,500 to 2,000, maybe 3,000. I do have some here. I just don't know if we're going to want to go that far. Certainly would polish it further, though. Water. Look at the water. <laughs> <laughs> this table doesn't shake. I don't know why everyone complains about the table. Where's the dot? <laughs> I'm glad I took a note of where it was supposed to align. I think the dot's gone. Dang, that's getting some polish. You see that? Mostly towards me, right in this corner over here. I seem to be putting more pressure on that side. This is super fine. Like, check that grid out. 3,000 is crazy. Okay, here we go. Polishing passes on 3,000. Hopefully it's sanded down enough at this point. Wait, this is, this is not good. Hang on, check out the instructions. Can you see that? Applications for high gloss polishing of final finishes on wood and automobiles. Nowhere does it say integrated heat spreaders. That's pretty shiny. <laughs> sure, it could be polished more. I took it to like a jeweler or something and asked them to do it. But uh, that's pretty good, I think, for our test. We'll see how it does. It's certainly very smooth at this point. I mean, we've done 600, 600 wet, 1,200, 1,200 wet, 2,000, 2,000 wet, and 3,000. And this 3,000 is probably turning into 4,000 at this point. Wow, that's getting very, very shiny. So there's a polished IHS for now. I could probably do a bit more with proper polishing tools or something, but it's functionally a mirror right now. So I want to go ahead and test this. It looks pretty damn good. So we're going to test this and then we're going to come back in the same video and show you the results. And, uh, and we'll see if it makes up the two degree difference, which was pretty close to margin of error anyway, although just outside of it. So we'll see if it makes it up and competes directly with the Rocket Cool IHS. I will say this one involved less blood, but uh, that's the fun part. So we'll let you know how it goes. Right now, let's get into the charts. As always, go to the testing methodology section linked in the article in the description below if you want to know how we tested this stuff. I actually don't know the results presently, but I will when I'm talking in a second. Previously, we were hitting 26.3 degrees Celsius over ambient for the Rocket Cool IHS. You can check our previous video on that if you want more data on how that performed thermally. That was without any silicone adhesive and it was our best thermal result. The stock Ryzen IHS without adhesive and without lapping held a 28 degree result, which is just barely outside of our error margins for this testing. Functionally, they're the same result, although measurably different. The stock IHS with silicone adhesive, which creates a bit of a Z height gap that needs to be filled with more tim under the IHS, measured at 32.6 degrees over ambient, and complete stock was 47 degrees over ambient, and that's again for the R3 2200G, which is a non-soldered AMD CPU. 
For our new test with the lapped IHS, we ran three test passes with newly applied conduct knot liquid metal for each pass, which we'll link below, and averaged at about 27.5 degrees. We're within error margins for either flanking result, and so can say that we've lost measurement resolution as to the differences between them. It looks like, logically, the results indicate we can get toward the rocket cool IHS thermally with lapping. It took more than $20 of sandpaper to get there, and so exceeded the cost of Rocket Cool's IHS, and also took an hour of time, but you can certainly push closer to its performance. Perhaps with even more polish, we'd be at equivalent. For now, the differences are outside of our measurement resolution. So all that work was basically for what we expected, which is roughly one degree of difference, maybe a bit more, a bit less, depending, because we ran multiple test passes, and at the end of the day, it was just between the Rocket Cool IHS and the stock one with no silicone adhesive. So thermally, they're kind of functionally identical, or at least they are outside of our measurement resolution, the, the difference between this and this one. We can't measure a difference reliably with our resolution. So not very exciting, but basically if you wanted to get more or less the Rocket Cool IHS performance, you could do it. If you have sandpaper lying around already, that's probably the best approach, because otherwise if you're buying sandpaper, you're spending basically the same amount of money on the sandpaper as you would for one of these, assuming they sell them again. And uh, also the hour of time has value too. So either way, neither of these things, our sanded version or the Rocket Cool IHS, neither of them are necessary. You don't even need to delay. It's just, it's not needed. If you want to do it for fun, or I mean, delitting does drop temperature like 14 degrees in, in some of our test cases, which is significant. That allows you to run a lot quieter fan speeds. If you want to delid, really you could just delid and put liquid metal on it and call it a day. If you really want to go the, the full copper, like no, no uh, nickel plating IHS approach, yeah, you could sand down yours. It's really just because it's cool and kind of fun at that point. And if you don't find it fun, then don't bother because you're not gaining a lot from it. Uh, the Rocket Cool one, same thing. An extra couple degrees isn't going to change anything, especially on an APU. It's just something that's kind of fun to do if you want to mess around with it uh, because it's cheap and it's not a big commitment if you've already done the delitting. But again, neither of these things are things that you should uh, get worked up over or deliberate over for more than a few minutes because it's not going to change your end result for overclocking and stuff like that. But delitting will. That's mostly because you're getting rid of silicon adhesive and thermal paste and replacing it with liquid metal. It's just the IHS part doesn't matter a whole lot. Anyway, it was a fun project. The IHS is really shiny now, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Makes for a good thumbnail or something, maybe some good B-roll. Uh, but that's mostly the end result. What might be fun is maybe laughing the inside of it, but we're still going to be looking at less than one degree difference. So maybe both sides of it will get us two which just is barely even worth it. So that's it for now. Thank you for su the suggestion on this one. A couple of you asked for this content. And as always, subscribe for more. If you like supporting this type of coverage for being a bit unique, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Solves out directly. Or store.gamersnexus.net. If you want to do a one-time donation, it's in the bottom left. Or you can pick up, of course, one of our mod mats or the GN crystals, the teardown 3D laser engraved crystals. Check it out at the store. I'll see you all next time.